Hello. I don't think anyone could deny that these are strange and challenging times indeed. So much so that I can't work from my normal studio. So, for the next few videos, I hope you'll forgive me not appearing all the way through. That may be a bonus, as much as a drawback, but you'll get my audio and you'll get my normal slides, plus a contact point where you can raise any questions. I hope you still enjoy the videos, and once we're through this crisis, I look forward to rejoining you from the usual spot. Welcome to the Skillic Explains Finance video. This week, I want to take on why investors need to keep a keen eye on audit reports in 2020. Not something investors pay a lot of attention to normally, but this year is very different. Now, the background is what? Well, in a nutshell, coronavirus has hit some sectors very hard indeed. You don't need me to tell you that. And this has created uncertainty, more uncertainty than usual, around financial reports, the annual reports that companies issue to their shareholders as prepared by the directors. And investors need to be ready for some surprises from company auditors, not something they'll be used to in the past, something we may see more of this year, and therefore be ready to understand the language and the jargon and the importance of what's being said. So, let's start with the basic question, what do auditors actually do? They're kind of hidden in the shadows most of the time, but they're pretty important. So, companies are required to file accounts, typically annually, small companies, large companies, listed, private alike. And those are prepared by the directors. That's quite important to be presented to shareholders. In the middle, you've got this barrier this sanity check, if you like, called the auditors. They give an opinion, as it's known. They're independent of the firm, is the idea. The big names are the Price Waterhouse Coopers, the Ernst & Youngs, the Deloitte's, and so on, KPMG. Those are the bigger names in the space, but there are lots and lots of firms, some of them very small, and they give this independent opinion. Now, what is that opinion actually all about? Well, in essence, they confirm the set of accounts to use their language is true and fair. That expression, true, means numerically accurate, not down to the nearest penny, but within reason, materially accurate. And fair means free from major bias. So true and fair, accurate, free from bias. You might think, what's the bias bit all about? Well, don't forget that directors make a lot of judgments when they prepare a set of accounts. One of the big ones is how long they estimate assets will last because that influences the charge they make against profits called depreciation. There's a similar one called amortization and so on. The second thing that auditors do, aside from give a true and fair opinion, is confirm that the accounts have been prepared in accordance with the relevant legislation. Here, the Companies Act and its various amendments and schedules. So, two things, true and fair view and complying with the relevant law for that country. And usually, the audit report is fairly short. You have to dig around to find it in a set of financial statements, and it's what's called clean. Now, what can go wrong? What might change this year as a result of coronavirus? Well, the worst thing that can happen is if the auditors actually give a disclaimer of opinion. That's highly unusual, it's extremely serious, and that means they were simply unable to form a view on whether the accounts are true and fair, whether they've been prepared in accordance with the relevant law. That's unusual, but just be aware there is such a thing out there. More likely, but hopefully still not mega likely, in a lot of cases, a qualified report. And I'm using accounting auditing jargon here. I'll come back to that in a moment. And then there is an unqualified report, but not a completely clean one. So it's a little bit longer and it contains a paragraph dealing with what's called serious uncertainty. And again, I'm using the auditor's language here. So these are bits of jargon to watch out for. Let's explore what some of those second and third categories might imply. So why would an auditor qualify what would normally be and normally has been a clean audit report? Well, there are basically two or three grounds. One is a disagreement with management. So the directors have chosen to present something a certain way. The auditors don't agree with that presentation. They don't feel that gives a fully true and fair view of what's been happening in terms of the profit and loss account, the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. The second 
uh, grounds, if you like, is insufficient evidence. So the auditors go in, kick the tyres, do lots of interviews, do lots of work. They evidence gather to support the numbers the directors are trying to put in front of shareholders. And if they can't gather enough evidence, they might qualify on those grounds. And then the third one is what's called a going concern issue. And that's whether the, the auditors don't feel that they can guarantee, if you like, that the company has resources to keep going for at least another 12 months post balance sheet date. They talk about the foreseeable future. So there you've got disagreement with management, grounds one, insufficient evidence to draw a conclusion accurately, grounds two, and going concern. And that third one, certainly you'll see highlighted in the press a few times this year in certain sectors. The hardest hit sectors, hospitality, retail, travel, leisure, and so on. There are worries that we could see qualifications on one of those grounds, and the third one in particular going concern has to be higher risk in 2020 than it was, say, last year. Now, it might be that you see a company get away without a display, uh, sorry, without a qualified audit opinion, but there's a paragraph in the audit report that deals with serious uncertainty. So what's that? Well, the first point to make is this is not a qualification. This is not the auditor saying that we had major disagreements with management, we, we couldn't gather evidence, uh, the company uh, doesn't have the resources to keep going as it were. So it's not a qualified report but it's a paragraph, it's an important paragraph relating typically to an area where the auditors have a concern. So this could be over asset valuations if you've got a company that's property heavy or carries a lot of stock for example and you're in a difficult trading environment or it might relate to outstanding legal claims, for example. It's important. It is likely to worry shareholders. It is likely to impact the share price. But it's important that, as an investor, you take away the idea that there are these different levels on which auditors can express concern and have some feel for what the differences between them actually are. Any questions on what's a big, quite technical topic, editor at killick.com and if you'd like to find out more about accounts financial statements in general killick.com forward slash learn and I'd start in the financial statements section.